What's that? I think it does, yep. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's see. Before I start, what are we working on? A rectangle. Oh, I can just draw a rectangle pretty easy right from here. So there's a nice little rectangle. Let's scooch it over a little bit. And let's put some diagonals in this rectangle. So we'll start from this corner, go down to here. And same thing on the other one. Okay. Let's label it E, F, G, H. Okay, E, F, G, and H. K in the middle. All right, let's review this real quick before we actually get to the questions that they ask. This is a rectangle. So what kind of angles do we have here at angle E, F, at G, and H? Right. They're right angles. They're 90 degree angles, aren't they? Okay. That was pretty easy since it's a rectangle. You know the opposite sides are equal to each other. You know the opposite angles are equal to each other. All that good stuff because of the parallelogram. You know the diagonals bisect each other. Now, it's a rectangle. What do we know specifically about a rectangle that's not necessarily true about all the other things that we've studied? What's true about the diagonals, like EG and FH? What's true about those diagonals? They're what? They're equal to each other. Very good. Okay, they're equal to each other. Now, they bisect each other, so what else must be true? What do you think is true about EK, FK, GK, and HK? What do you think are true about all four of these segments in here? They're all going to be the same length, right? Because look, if I start off with two equal things, right? Let's say I have two pens, right? Took this pen, split it in half, then I got this segment and this segment, right? What if I take the same exact, you know, a pen that's identical length to it, split that in half? What's true about all four halves? They're all going to be the same, aren't they? It's the same thing here. EG and FH, they're exactly the same. If I cut them both in half, then guess what? They're all going to be equal to each other, aren't they? Does that make sense? Okay, that's only true about a what? A rectangle. It's only true about a rectangle. Thank you. Um, it's not true about a rhombus, so don't think those four things are equal on a rhombus. Okay, it's only true about a rectangle. The hardest part of this chapter is just keeping straight what's true about each figure. But if you look at it, I mean, look, it's not slanted any different from here as it is to here. All right, so it's got to be the same distance from corner to corner um, on both of those. All right, a rhombus is different because a rhombus kind of slants, doesn't it? So one's going to be longer than the other one. Make sense? Okay, uh, let's see what they tell you here. Uh, they say angle FEG is 57 degrees. FEG, let's change colors. That's this angle right there is 57 degrees. Okay? Uh, if that's 57 degrees, it asks for angle GEH. Here's GEH. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to mark it so that I don't forget which angle I'm dealing with. Everybody with me? So look, if this is 57 degrees, we're trying to find this angle right here. Are they necessarily equal to each other? No. No, they're not equal to each other. Okay, when would they equal each other? If this figure was a what? Rhombus. If it was a rhombus, then the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. If it was a rhombus, then these two angles would be the same. Is this a rhombus, though? No, it's not a rhombus. A rhombus has all four sides equal to each other. This does not have all four sides equal to each other. It's a rectangle. But what do we say? We said it right at the beginning. What's true about this angle right here? It's a what? 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees. It's a right angle, isn't it? So if this is 57, how do I find this angle right here? 90 minus. That's it. I just take it away. So if I had $90 and I gave you $57, how much money would I have left? I'd have 33 because that's what's going on, isn't it? Because these two add up to 90. Agreed? So I take away 57 and I have what's left over. So let's just show the math. 90 minus 57 and that's 33. And so that's what this angle right there is going to be. It's 33 degrees. That's all there is to it. The math was not difficult, was it? Do you agree? Math was easy. It's just knowing what to do, right? Knowing to take it away from 90, that's the part, that's the geometry. That's the part that we're trying to teach here, okay? So if it's a right angle, you take 57 away from 90 and you get 33. Look, just for fun, let's do, a, um, <clears throat> let's do some other angles in here. If this is 57 right here, talk to me now. What about this angle right here? What's this going to be? It's going to be 57 as well. I didn't have to do any math at all, did I? What's true? Give me 
give me the uh, word. Remember, these two sides are parallel. Yeah, that's good. They're alternate interior angles. So that's 57 and that's 57. So guess what this angle right here is going to be? What's this angle right here going to be? Right here. It's going to be 33. <clears throat> you could get it a couple of different ways. You could go 90 minus 57. <coughs> Excuse me. I cannot get rid of this cough. I've had it for a week. It just won't go away. Is that what it is? Together? Oh, <laughs> separately. I was gonna say that's kind of gross. <laughs> Robitussin and orange juice. All right, I'll give it a. I'll give it a try. So 57 and 33, right there. Now look up here. What about these angles up here? Hmm. I don't know. Let's go back to this triangle. See how these two sides are equal to each other? What must be true about these opposite angles if these two sides are equal? They're equal to each other too. So if this is 33, guess what this is? That's 33. Right? So if that's 33, what's this one right here? That's 57. Okay, play the game. It's not that hard. Watch. That's 57. You see it? What else? Let's come up here. What about this one up here? This one right here. That's 57. Right? And then what about this one here? That's 33. You getting the hang of it? Okay, look. This is 33. That's 33. Let's find this angle right here. In fact, let's change the color of it. Um, I don't know. Let's go like this purple color. Well, it looks the same as that. I say you're right. Let me just um, <laughs> let me just get to this. Uh, let's just change. What haven't we used yet? Like this blue. Let's use this blue. No, it's a good thing they're not comfy. Keep you awake. All right. So watch this angle right here. Say it, Isaiah. You already said it. What do you do? That's right, you take 180 minus, look, add these two up, 66, and what's that going to be? That's going to be a 7, and that's going to be 114, right? So look at this angle right here. But some of you guys are looking at this, I hope you, hope you are. You're looking at this angle, and you're like, wait a minute. Is there any way that could be equal to 114 degrees? Look, that's an acute angle. But the thing is, you always have to go by the numbers, right? You don't just look to see if it looks like a certain particular type of angle. If this, look, that doesn't look 57 and that's 33. Look, this angle right here looks a lot bigger than this. It all depends on how you draw your rectangle, doesn't it? Okay, so I might have drawn it not to scale, and that's fine. Our numbers are still right, though. All right, if I asked for angle EKH, this would still be 114 degrees. Make sense? All right, if this is 114, let's find this angle right here. Do this in green. That's right. Take it away from 180. Okay. Now watch. I kind of did. The, I've kind of done the math already down here, didn't I? I went 180 minus 66 is 114. So guess what? 180 minus 114 is what? So that's going to be 66. Look at this. This goes back in time a little bit to another um, to another lesson we did, and I think another chapter. We could have done that. We could have gone 180 minus 114. What's another way? We we could have done it by addition. Not to get the. Not to get the 66. No. Not to get 66. There's another way. It's an addition problem. No. Come on, look at it. It's addition to get 66. Okay, what's the rule, though? 33 and 30. Very good. It's the exterior angle. Do you remember that? The remote interior angles. We had a big talk about that. Remember that? So this is the exterior angle of this triangle right here. Do you see it? I just took the side and I extended it out. What's it equal to? The sum of the remote interior angles. So all I really had to do was go 33 plus 33 and that's 66. Okay, I'm just showing you different ways you could look at stuff. Isn't it cool how it all comes together? I like it. Okay, it's not just one way to do stuff most of the time. Usually there's a couple three ways sometimes how to, how to solve a problem and that's kind of nice because if you don't know how to do it one way most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, there's another way to figure it out. So that's kind of cool. Watch, if this was 66, talk to me about this, where this K is right here, EKF. That's going to be 66. What's the reason for that? I think I heard it. Somebody say it? Vertical angles, right. Vertical angles. That's 66. Look, I could find this one by taking 180 minus 66, or without doing any math at all, what could I do? What's this angle right here? 114, because of, again, what? Vertical, vertical angles. Yeah, we call them vertical angles. Um, it's just what the book calls it. I'm not really sure why they call it vertical angles because, look, these two really aren't going vertical to each other, are they? 
they're kind of like horizontal, but we, do, we call them vertical angles for whatever reason. If you want to call them opposite angles, I don't know if books do that or not. I've always heard it vertical angles, but there you go. All right, enough of that with the angles. That's pretty simple, isn't it? All right, once you know, look, all I knew, look, I knew all that stuff because of knowing just one angle. One angle, and I figured out all those other angles in there. Okay? You don't share my enthusiasm with that? I think that's pretty cool. Well, I, I, kind, I think it's neat. You find one thing, and then, th but you got to know a bunch of stuff, right? You got to know a lot of other stuff, um, but you can find every single one of those angles in that whole entire figure right there. I think that's pretty cool. All right, um, let's do another one. Let's say, they say FK is 32. Um, tell you what, let's do this. Let's get rid of everything except for the rectangle and the diagonals. And tell you what, we'll keep the letters as well. Let's see if I can, oops. Oh, I should have done that. Let's try this again. I'll just rewrite the letters. Okay, we'll save the rectangle, save that diagonal, save that diagonal. Boom, get rid of everything else. Isn't that exciting? Okay, now let's put the letters in here again. So what do we got? E, F, G, H, and then K in the middle. Okay, here we go. Here's what they tell you now. They tell you F, K is 32. So that little segment right there is 32, and it says find E, G. Find E, G. Let's write it down. E, G is equal to what? Well, look at it. Look at 32. 32 is part of this diagonal, isn't it? We're trying to find the other diagonal. Is there any relationship between the two diagonals? Sure there is. All the, all the diagonals are the same, right? The whole diagonal is the same. And all four of these, that's what you're saying? All four of these are the same. So watch, if that's 32, guess what this is? That's 32, and guess what this is? That's 32. What's EG? 60. Four. That's right. It's from here to here. 32 plus 32. That's all it is. Okay. The math, again, is not hard. No more bubbles, please. Um, the math is not hard. It's just knowing that all four of these segments are exactly the same on a rectangle. That's what you have to know. That's the geometry. Make sense? The math is not hard, is it? The math is easy on this particular problem anyway. And that's what EG is equal to. Anything else difficult on this? Not really. Let's do the last one. Let's see if that shows up. Uh, maybe we'll go to that one. Okay, watch. EF is 4x minus 6. Okay, so EF from here to here is 4x minus 6. Then HG, this bottom one, is x plus 3. All right. Everybody see that? Let's scooch it down so it stays on screen. Let's get rid of that. And let's change colors again. Okay, here we go. Watch this. What's true about this segment, EF and HG? That's one of the ones we learned from the very beginning of this chapter. What's true about those two sides? They're equal to each other, right? It's a rectangle. Opposite sides are equal to each other on a rectangle on a parallelogram, right? They're equal to each other. So guess what? We just set them equal to each other. All right? And do the math. The math is simple, right, Isaiah? You getting all this? Come on, head up, please. Watch, subtract an x from both sides, and you get 3x. Add a 6 to both sides, you get 9. Divide by 3, you get what? You get x equals 3. Is that my final answer? No, because they ask you to find what? E, F. They ask you to find what the length of E, F is. we got to find that whole thing. So it's not just 3, is it? you got to do what? Plug it back in, right? Make sure you remember to plug it back in. Take that 3, plug it into this. So it's 4 times 3 minus 6. That's 12 minus 6, and that is 6. So EF is 6. You good with that? All right. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on to the rhombus. I miss some of it. I miss the old days. I miss the old days. To tell you the truth, it's um, at its largest it was around the mid to late 80s. Um, it's about as big as Red Lion is right now, but Red Lion was quite a bit bigger. All right, so here we go. Here's a rhombus, and we've got diagonals of a rhombus. Actually, this rhombus, let's. I'm gonna have to redraw this, aren't I? It doesn't really matter. To tell you the truth, I'll just keep it. Eh. Let's 
do it. Let's just change it. Transform, uh, reflect, about like that. Good. Now that looks like the one that's in the book, doesn't it? So what do we got? A, B. Whoops. That's A, B, C, and D, and E in the middle. All right. It says it's a rhombus. It says E, B is 9. Where's E, B? That part right there. That's 9. A, B is 12. And they tell you an angle, angle ABD. ABD, that's this one right here. That's 55 degrees. Okay, let's just basically find everything. Is that all right with you? Good. All right. What do we know? I'll tell you, let's move this E, get it out of the way. Just move it down right there. So I'm going to use that space right there. What do we know about the diagonals of rhombus? Are they equal to each other? No. Now, we know they bisect each other, right? Okay, they bisect each other. So this is 9, this is 9. But the problem is, I don't know what this is. I don't know what AE is equal to. But what else do they do on a rhombus? The diagonals hit perpendicular. Very good, Isaiah. So that's 90 degrees right there. So guess what we have? What kind of triangle do we have? ABE. What kind of triangle is that? It's a right triangle, isn't it? I'll tell you what, let's make it um, jump out a little bit more. This is what I did in the last class, and I think it worked out pretty well. Watch. I'm just going to uh, do like this, and go about right there, right? Just so it stands out a little bit more. I just want you to kind of see. Let's drop that down a little bit. Okay, that's better. I want you to see that right angle. It kind of pops out now, doesn't it? Now, look. I know one side. I know another side. If I know two sides of a right triangle, I can always, 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 always find the third side if I know two of them. And we would do that. How? Yeah, what's the name of it? Pythagorean theorem. That's right. So it is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right? We've talked about this before. This is nothing new, but some of you guys aren't 100% on board with this. Remember, the A and the B are the what of the right triangle? Legs. The legs. Okay, these are the legs of the right triangle. The C is always the what? Hypotenuse. Okay, make sure you understand that when we do this. Okay? Is that going to be like on the test a lot? It could be. <laughs> it'll, it'll probably be on there at least once, I would say. I don't know for 100%, but I'll, I'll try to make sure you have one of those on there. Okay, isn't that nice of me? All right, because I want to make sure you know how to do Pythagorean theorem. All right, here we go. So what can we write? I don't know what A is. Let's just call that little A. Is that all right? So I'm going to call this what? A squared plus what? 9 squared. That's the important thing. It's A squared plus 9 squared. Too many people do this. Take a guess. Take a wild guess what people do. Well, a lot of people go 9 squared plus 12 squared equals this squared. Okay, they just think, oh, the two that you know, it's always the A and B. No, it's the two legs are the A and the B. You get it? Yeah. All right, so it's A squared plus 9 squared equals what? 12 squared. 12 squared. Let's do the math. So A squared plus what's 9 squared? 81. What's 12 squared? 144. Okay, A squared equals, what do I do with that 81? Subtract it. So what's that? 63? All right, so a squared is 63. So a is, how do I, how do I get rid of that squared? Square. square root. Square root both sides. So it's a square to 63. You can chuck that into a calculator. Does anybody have a calculator out? And I think I had, what is it? A is approximately what? 7 point something, right? About 9? Okay. So around 7.9. So that's what a is. And so we'll say it's 7.9. So actually they ask for a e, don't they? which is 7.9. Here's another question they ask. Uh, they ask for CE as well. Now look at this. You don't even have to do any math at all for this one. Look. If AE is 7.9, what's CE equal to? 7.9, because remember, that thing's bisected, isn't it? Okay, well, please go. So look, this is 7.9 as well. You see it? Because these two, this one and this one, are equal. Why? Because they bisect each other. Same thing with this. Remember I said this was 9 and that would be 9? All right. Well, these two are equal to each other as well. Got it? Is this sinking in at all? Yeah. I hope. I mean, we're going over this over and over and over again, right? So there should be no excuse not to know this stuff when the test comes around. So let's, um, I think they throw another, oh, the, the angle, right. Let's do this in a different color. 
Let's go with this pink color. All right, watch. If this is 55, I've talked about this before. We mentioned this earlier today. On a rhombus, what does this diagonal do to this angle on a rhombus? It bisects it. So if this is 55, talk to me. What's this one? It's 55. That's right. I don't take it away from 90 or 180, do I? They're exactly the same. Now look, the opposite angles are equal to each other, so if those two are 55, talk about these two. They both have to be 55 as well. Make sense? It's easy, isn't it? Okay, let's talk about um, these two angles right here. You can do it a couple ways. I'll tell you what, let's mark this. We'll make this kind of looks orange, doesn't it? So let's talk about this angle right here. Look what we have. I've got a right triangle, don't I? Okay, so how could I find this angle right here? What do you think, Abby? Add 90 and 55. Mm -hmm. And then... That's right. Add these two up, take it away from 180. Let me show you a little uh, cleaner, easier way to do it with just one arithmetic thing. Watch this. This is 90 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So really, I'm going to take 90 degrees away from 180, aren't I? What's 180 minus 90? It's 90. So if you have a right triangle, you don't even have to worry about going 180 minus 90 minus 50. You could just say what every single time? You could just say 90 minus 55. Exactly right. On a right triangle, couldn't you? Because you're always going to go 180 minus 90. So why not just start off with 90? Because 180 minus 90 is 90, isn't it? So you could just say in one little uh, step, 90 minus 55. And what is that? That's 35. So that angle right there is 35. Just like that other problem, we can find all of these other ones very easily. If that's 35, guess what this is? And then these two up here, same exact thing. You see it? Okay. And there you go. You can pretty much find anything here then. If you wanted to, you could find BC. What would you do? What would your Pythagorean theorem be? If I wanted to find BC, it would be 9 squared plus... 7.9 squared. I'm not going to go through that, but you could do it, couldn't you? You could go 9 squared. Actually, what should it come out to be? I'm sorry. It should come out to be 12, exactly, because this thing's a rhombus. If that's 12, then guess what BC is? That's 12. What's DC? What's AB? Or AD, sorry. It's 12, okay? But you could always check it, all right, and see. Now watch. We rounded this to 7.9, though, didn't we? All right, so it may not come out exactly 12 if you do Pythagorean theorem. It should come out really super, super close to 12. All right, and the only reason it doesn't come out exactly 12 is because we rounded this in the first place, okay? So does it make sense? All right, there you go. That's enough about rhombus. We killed the rhombus, didn't we? Or killed it in the good way. Like, Don't you guys say that? Oh, that thing killed. You remember? Yeah, if something was good... You say that, don't you? I heard the, oh, I heard the kids saying that. I, I say that thing is cool. It was swell. Yeah, that's what we say. All right, here we go. We've got a kite. Actually, yeah, they, they do. They put these little uh, diagonals in here. Well, what do we know about a kite? Look, we know that this side and this side are equal to each other. And what else do we know? That this one and this one are equal. It also has one exactly one pair of equal opposite angles. It's not this one and this one. Okay, it's not the one that's between the two equal sides. It's always the one between the two non-equal sides. You see, do you see that? Those two are the ones that are equal to each other. It's the ones, it's the angles between the two non-equal sides. Do you see that? Hope you're all getting this. Javon, you getting all this? Somehow I don't think so. So watch. That right there is 12. That right there is 15, and they ask for uh, GH, which is, we'll just call this, um, we'll call this X. From here to here is what they're looking for. What else do you think you know about the um, diagonals of a kite? They're perpendicular. Very good. See, Isaiah's paying attention. All right. So right there is perpendicular. It means we'll get a good grade on this test. So that's perpendicular. It's a right angle. So what are we going to do to solve for X? What do you think? Is it just equal to 15? Is it just equal to 12? What is it? Pythagorean theorem again. You see it? All right. Let me just, um, we'll try to do what I did a little earlier. Just try to highlight it. Okay, so that, that, and about like that. You see that right triangle right there? Okay, that's 12, that's 15, and you got to find the third side, which is x. Now this time, 
what are my two base or what are my two legs? Not bases. What are the two legs? 12 and 15. So that's my A and my B. So it's going to be, oops, let's not make this quite as thick. Okay, it's going to be 12 squared plus what? 15 squared equals x squared. Okay, or C, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't make any difference. Who's going to do this for me? That's what? 144 plus, I think it's 225 equals x squared. And what's that? 3, 6, 9, right? Equals x squared. What do we do with that? Put it under square root. So let me do that. Square root of 369, what's that equal to? 19.2? Okay. There you go, 19.2. That's exactly what they have in the book, okay, as the answer, 19.2, because that's that length right there. It's not hard at all, is it? So I definitely should expect you to be able to do Pythagorean theorem at least one or two problems, don't you think? Yeah, yeah I think so too, all right? Um, we got a couple minutes, sorry, keep dragging this out, but we got to do this. Uh, we'll turn it in the day of the test, okay? Turn the homework on. Yeah. So let's do one more, and then we'll quit, I promise. But this is good. This is good review. Um, we've got one like this. We've got one like this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, watch. I'm going to put this right here. Don't pack up. We're not done. we still got five minutes. Come on. All right, here we go. This right here, what kind of figure is this if I put two uh, parallel sides here? It's a trapezoid. That's right. It is a trapezoid. It's 112. Watch this. This length is 23, and this length is 23. And what it asks for is angle Z, which I haven't labeled it. It's this one right there. Okay, let's think about this. If this is 23 and this is 23, what kind of a trapezoid is it? It's not just a nor normal, everyday trapezoid. It's a special one. What kind is it? No. Isosceles. There is no regular trapezoid. Okay, It's an isosceles trapezoid, which means if... Th now, this really doesn't help you any, but this angle would equal what? This angle down here. You never know. On a certain problem, you may need to know that. Okay. Well, what do we know about this 112 and this angle right here? Are they equal to each other as well? What are they? Mm, the two angles? Not the two. Oh, 180. 180. That's right. They add up to 180 because they're, they're uh, consecutive interior angles. Remember that phrase? So that means they're supplementary. So this one, because look, parallel lines, cut by transversal. Do you see that? They're on the same side of the transversal. Consecutive interior angles. So all we have to do is 180 minus 112. And what's that? 68. And that's what this angle is right here, 68 degrees. And that's all you have to do. Simple as that. Okay. Yeah, this one would be 68 as well. And if it's isosceles trapezoid, guess what this one's going to be? It's going to be 112. Right. So they could ask you any of those. Eight. I did. It's a, because it's isosceles trapezoid and the base angles are always um, equal to each other. Okay. Make sense? Now, these don't have to add up to 180, right? Because yeah. these are not parallel lines. Okay, so there are consecutive interior angles, but not of parallel lines. Got it? All right, that's enough. I'm going to, a little homework for you. Oh, man. I thought you got out of it, didn't you? I'm not going to forget. All right, so it's page uh, 449. And we're doing all of them. Okay, so it's 1 to 25. So it's good practice. Remember, there's 20 questions on a test, a regular test, so I'm giving 25 for homework. That should be fine to do. Yes? Now, this is going to be separate, okay? Study guide is all one homework, and then practice test is a separate homework. So do it on a separate sheet of paper, okay? So practice test is a completely different homework. So when we take the test on which day? Thursday. Thursday you're going to turn in two things. You're going to turn in the study guide, right, the whole thing, part one and part two. It's going to be one chunk. Staple it together if you need to. And then you're going to turn in the practice test. Okay? 